I'm on the camera again. A customer has came down. He's part X in this. If I make a mistake, contradict me, and I made a mistake a couple of weeks ago. You've just been to Tenerife, haven't you, Vanda? He took a 41mm non-dead sub. This is a Swiss company called NSA. <laughs> Any birds? <laughs> Your granddad passed that news so and I'm sorry to see it. This is a lot more built on hype. The bid would be somewhere between seven and a half and eight thousand. Oh my goodness. Vintage Rolex, Oyster Royale. This watch is probably late 40s, early 50s. And that is retailing for £9,318. This retails just shy of £60,000. Customer has came down, he's part X in this. Yachtmaster 2, 1166, what? 8-1, uh, rose gold and steel. Don't see these too often. I know we've mentioned them in a previous video before. So this is the one with the older hands, and I think value-wise, it's a lot better value for money than getting a new one for up to 20,000 pounds. How much difference does the hands make? Depending on the age as well, up to three, four, five grand. Really? Depending on the age. Ah, right, okay. So Cause that, it, that watch has been in production for a little while, isn't Yeah, it? So, so I think this is this is probably one of the earlier ones. So this is day 25. 13. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the earlier ones and obviously it goes up to being brand new up to 2023 But you're looking over 20,000 for a new one today, so Can you remember when the hands actually changed over to the Mercedes 2018, style? 2018 I think it was. I had this long? Um, about six months. Six months. Just not like it or you fancy a change. Just uh, going back to the roots I think. Just a little mm. bit too big for me. <laughs> yeah, it is a trick out. Battles, so. What's the price of the 22? Uh, 500 more. This is perfect though, yeah. it's real more. Links, both swing tags, bezel protector. Well, you got both swing tags as well, yeah, the white. Absolutely oh, everything. No, I know you like fine. to have full sets. Yeah, so. I do, yeah, no, that's absolutely fine. <laughs> so the 22 is the exact same. Do you want those links in? Could we yeah. take that? Right. All of them all. Yeah, we'll try all the things, I think. Little rundown off that deal. So my customer came and part X to his two tone Yachtmaster two. He took a forty one mil non date sub. Something that he had back in the day a few years ago. He had a sub date. He had this for about six months. Just found it a little bit too big. It is a chunky watch. It's a forty four millimeter, a lot bigger than a sub. So he's gone back to a sub for everyday use. And I'm sure he'll probably be back for a ceramic date one. I think he wants. So hopefully we can sort that out for him as well. We we'll have a date just smooth bezel with a green Arabic dial. Custom. Them. Yeah, so we sold it with a black dial and then the customer requested that he wanted this specific dial So mm -hmm. we did get a custom dial for him. So the watch will come with an original dial as well Of course, John, what have you got there? DHS 41, fluted bezel, oyster bracelet, azuro blue dial with mm -hmm. the Roman numerals. Uh, that's a 2021. Needs a little bit of a polish, but it's in very good condition. It will retail for probably around ten and a half thousand. I'm on the camera again. Back, back with us. See well, this one suit you, man. I haven't worn any watches for a while, so... What about this one? Oh, that's a good one, that's a good one. Yacht Master 2, it's a bit tight on you, that. A bit tight, but it's a big watch, isn't it? Uh, that suit you? Oh, aye. Too big for me. You'll get the birds with that on, Vanda. I got, I got it in. It's looking spot on. So what, 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 can we get a wrist check what are we wearing today, though? It's so only 17 grand, that one. This one's only seven. How much is that? That one's seven grand. That's seven pounds. Seven pounds. <laughs> I bought that in uh, Tenerife, ten euro. You've just been to Tenerife, haven't you, Vanda? Aye. Was the weather good? Yes, you go by the weather. Any birds? <laughs> Your granddad passed that now, so and I'm sorry to see it. He would have had a couple, wouldn't you? You take his tape bag out? I've had my share, but uh, <laughs> I'm not telling you no. <laughs> He's back. So, Harry, for the fashionistas, anybody that's a regular viewer, I've just walked into a little jewellery store and a 77-year-old gentleman went, I recognise that leather jacket. The bell staff, which is coming in very handy today because it's very cold outside in Newcastle and it's just done the job nicely. In the pockets today are a few little vintage items which we've been talking about and we'll follow up. I am going to take the bell staff off because if Jack's been in, the heating's on and it is hotter than hell here in Watch Trader.
Friday afternoon in Watch Trader and I'm a little bit pleased with myself today because I've been to two jewellery shops. One, a 77-year-old guy commented on the YouTube and then in the next jewellery shop, a really hot blonde said, hey, you're a bit famous. I watch <laughs> you on Instagram. I hope so it's the hot blonde that isn't Vicky. So for that <laughs> purposes, so and the hot blonde knows who the hot blonde is. First thing we're going to look at today, I always like to say, if I make a mistake, contradict me. And I made a mistake a couple of weeks ago. This watch came in with another watch for service and to look at possibly changing the bracelet, the strap. And I quickly looked at it and said it was a gay phrase. I will stand corrected. Gay phrase is another exceptionally good bracelet manufacturer that were done for what would be called now an aftermarket bracelet, aftermarket strap. A lot of the time on this age, they were called bands. So right. this is a Swiss company called NSA. Because I'm looking at it again, equally as good quality as Gay Frey's. Probably not as famous. Used on many, many Swiss brand watches. I mentioned Hoya before, but Hoya, Breitling, Movado, Roma, possibly not a Turner because I think they always did their own. But yeah, quality, quality watch. Uh, I got that one wrong. Somebody corrected me. Thank you very much. The next thing we're going to move on to, an elderly gentleman came in and me being the old sentimentalist that I am, the last time that he had the watch serviced, which was about eight to ten years ago, he asked the watchmaker or wherever it went to, to make a note of the model and serial number. It's a stainless steel, vintage Rolex, Oyster Royale, and the model number is 6044. We'll keep the serial number to ourselves. This is a watch that the gentleman wanted to know what it was worth and we purchased it in store. It has been into the workshop, it's been serviced. Again, it's on a, an expanding bracelet. We had the conversation about the lady that thought that the gold one was real gold. These are 595, 695. I think it would benefit from a really nice leather strap. I think that watch will stay on that bracelet, but this one will be changed. It'll go on a nice leather strap. Ideal for a, it's classed as a boy, size Rolex. I've just looked at a turnograph mm -hmm. this morning, a vintage turnograph, which is exactly the same as the modern turnograph. And you never know, is that going to be a model that Rolex reintroduced? So the dial on that, would that have started out as a brilliant white dial or was it always It would have been brilliant white. I don't mm -hmm. think that would have been because if you look at the shading round here, mm -hmm. it is, it's got white. So I think that would have started off as white and it's just getting darker and darker. The dial's a bit far away from where I'm standing, but those hands, what do you call them? They're not sword hands. So these aren't quite wide enough for sword hands, but they're close. So they're not, obviously, the famous hands are Concord hands on a Rolex. Mm -hmm. And then it's obviously morphed into what everybody sees today and calls the Mercedes hands. Don't know how Rolex feel about that. But one of the things that I've just noticed, as you've said that, I've looked at the hands. This watch is probably late 40s, early 50s, the same as the other one. This one has a slightly bigger winder, which is Rolex crested. I would say it's original winder. Winder. It's very large for the watch, so I think it's not the right winder. Can you read what it says on the winder? Brevet it should have. I think it says Super Oyster. Super Oyster, yeah, you're right. I think this is an oversized winder. Mm -hmm. It works. The watch has been serviced in the workshop. It hasn't been touched anything other. When I know that the watch is running right, I then decide what I'm going to do. And this one has a Rolex crest on, but no writing. On oh. this age, you would have gotten Brevet, at Rolex Brevet. It's a, it's a manufacturing company that made the winders. So the indices on, on both of those watches, I mean, they're not too far apart. What are they, what is it made out of? I know they're white gold on a lot of the new Rolexes, yeah. but are they steel? These will be steel. They, these right, will be stainless okay. steel to match the watch. These mm. watches are 
probably not that far apart age-wise. Mm -hmm. This is more traditional, so your traditional Oyster Royal. This is going into your modern Oyster Perpetual. So the Oyster Royal, that is a manual wind watch, or is it? Manual wind, yes. both manual wind, yeah. pre-automatic. How much is that worth today? I think retail on that is between 1,600 and 2,000 pounds. Either of these was for sale mm -hmm. in a Bond Street watch specialist. There'll be double that. Okay, guys, another busy morning in Watch Trader. We've just purchased another 15510 ST. This one is a black dial. It's actually called a black tapisserie dial. Yeah, 41 millimeter, self winding. Full steel bracelet, full steel case with the beautiful open case back. How much is that watch going for these uh, days? So these watches, dial dependent, so the black dial retails for ballpark around 40,000, maybe a touch less. This particular watch is 2022. The model came out in 22, so 22 and 23 available. This is an unworn watch, 2022. Um, yeah, great watch with the black dial. It also comes in white and blue. So the piece de resistance today, Harry, the watch is a vintage Amiga chrono stock. So it's a single button. So the watch works, but the single chrono button doesn't work. It doesn't start the second hand. So second is that hand. a little bit like a stopwatch? It's a little bit like a stopwatch, but it has no minute counter. Right. So it's for timing very, very short races. Right. 100 <laughs> so, years, maybe. Yeah, yeah. So the lady rang me. She was elderly. She lived in the Time Valley. So I had a drive up to a lovely little village and had a nice cup of tea and a biscuit. On the picture that the guy sent through, and you, because you're smart, Harry, will know what floats me boat on this. This watch was purchased in Oslo from an Amiga retailer. The details were filled in. The family was originally from Sunderland, which is in the opposite direction to where I went. And it was purchased on the 23rd of June 1969. So for anybody that watches and for Harry realises that there's only one place that this watch will be going That's and it's home with me because it's my birth year 1969. How so, do you tell on a Amiga how old it is? Does it have a serial number that links has, to the year? It, it has case numbers which are datable and it's on the internal back of the watch. So I haven't got the tools to take it off today. I'm hoping that this is a relatively easy easy fix the pusher it's been serviced in the last 10 years that is going to a lovely new home purpley bluey pink diamond pinstripe dial Hando will tell us exactly what it's called. Well, well, That's what they call it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm, uh, wow. Yeah, that's a new, new addition to Rolex's Is range. it a kind of mother of pearl or something? No. It's, I haven't got a clue what it's called. I don't know Perfect everything. Thing. Right? I haven't got the oracle written well, on my forehead. That, that's that's not, it's that's a lovely, lovely dial. about three years ago. Purpley pink. Purpley blue. Purpley pink edition, that's it. Purpley pink edition. The Indigo Special. Yeah. I can see it's a concealed class one though. It so. is, it's quite new, 2020. Old style warranty card, 2020 watch. So and what is it, is that a 28mm watch? Yes, yeah. 28 mil concealed clasp, yellow golden stainless steel bimetal fluted bezel diamond dial. Did you have a figure in mind how much you were looking for for it? I think we searched out how much they were selling for private and it was around about 11. So is this the kind of watch where there's, it's quite difficult to see comparables on well, you know, eBay and You would have thought that, but the first, I put the model number in and I put diamond in on Chrono 24 and sure enough what's the... The second watch that comes up. That's in America, and that is retailing for £9,318, and there's a, around a 5% fee. So if you if you consider there's about £400 in fees, it's around the £9,000 mark. Doubt I'll find another one. Oh, I tell a lie. And that one's significantly more expensive. <laughs> so with the fees, that's about £12,500. It's another one in Holland there. I've never seen that before though, I've never seen that dial, so it is a nice dial. 
So, I'm just going on from what I can see. Are you looking for a direct sale or would you consider consignment? Which is basically where we will sell the watch on your behalf. I would suggest with this watch, you're going to probably get £1,500 more letting me sell it than if we buy it. Mm -hmm. Ladies' watches are a little bit different to men's where the majority of watches we sell are men's watches to men. The majority of ladies' watches are bought for a special occasion by men or, or by women, but just n not as many. I also think that when women buy a watch, they keep it, whereas men like to change. Mm -hmm. So that's probably why we do a lot more trade with, with men rather than women and sell a lot more men's watches than ladies' watches. I think if we were buying it outright, the the bid would be somewhere between seven and a half and eight thousand. I think selling the watch on consignment, we could return a minimum of nine thousand. What I do find is though things like this, especially in this condition, in this age, we never seem to have them for a long time. Right. Obviously, we can monitor the the price at any stage. <coughs> I would suggest advertising it for 10950 perhaps in that price that will then leave some scope for me to negotiate with somebody if somebody wants to make a bid 9000 9, is the minimum amount you'll get mm -hmm. and in an ideal world someone will walk in and they'll pay full price if they buy through chrono if they want to organize finance mm -hmm. or if they want to make a bid then i can mm -hmm. negotiate on your behalf i'm quite happy with the direct seal right okay. in particular because it's actually my mum's watch Okay. And she's got investment that she needs to go ahead with. Okay. If it was pushing to the eight. So with the eight, the the cost would be for what it would cost us to have it retail ready, and that mm -hmm. would be the difference between seven and a half thousand and eight thousand. So what I'm gonna do is ask what right. would it cost to have that brand new and ready for sale? Glass is fine, bracelets fine. How old is it, John? Twenty twenty. 2020 don't think it'll need a service it seems to be winding seems to be running fine no rattles no rotor it probably needs a couple of hundred pounds spending on it to get it retail ready what i would say as well is there's a lot of companies that when they get your watch they'll they'll, they'll charge a standard 300 pounds for a polish 300 pounds for a service no matter what age the watch is so before you know it you're near into a thousand pounds for the cost to come off so what we do is we will only charge you the, the cost price for things like that. So if you're happy with that, I can agree it's 7,800. Yeah, yeah, go on. Right, thank you. Right, Harry, so just to confirm, done a little bit of research and it's actually a lot of people referring it to a lavender dial. Lavender, obviously in color and in smell and uh, it's diamond dot as well. So. It's actually got a texture to it. Though, it's got it? like a pinstripe to it. I don't know if you'll see better on the, the picture at the side of the screen. I probably thought it was a little bit older than 2020 when I first seen it, but mm -hmm. sure enough. So what does the dial make a difference to the price? They're just more unusual. I think it's quite pretty as well, so I think it's something that maybe a younger younger lady will like. But in terms of if that was just a champagne, the same watch, 2020, would it be a different price? or does Probably. That kind of I think it would or? probably be up to a £1,000 more, but I think I could probably sell five of those in the same time it would take, take to sell a, mm -hmm. like a basic champagne dial or something like that. Oh, yeah. So we will be retailing that at £10,750 and I think it's, it'll make somebody a nice watch. How are you? You okay? Yeah, Josh? Good, thank you. Nice to meet you. Take a seat there. Yeah. Here's the watch pad. So it's 2021 box papers. So it's nice to have the full set so it's got absolutely everything with it. Tag, bezel detector. Is it your first Rolex? It is my first one, yeah. Yeah, it's a classic Rolex as well, this sort of. Well, we're getting married, so it kind of, oh, okay. just for the wedding day. Yeah, right? yeah. So you're not allowed to wear it till the wedding day? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Especially when you're having gold, it might scuff a bit. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Look nice and sweet. But we can offer you a free polish as well, because gold does scratch very easily. Yeah. But it's going to get scratched, just wear the watch. It's better to oh, no, just we'll wear it and enjoy it, you know, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I think you'll need probably one or two links yeah, out. I'm going to need some out so I'll show you this as well. So the Submariner comes with the glide lock. If you just pull that down, so it'll click, mm -hmm. and then you can pretty much just make it as tight as you like. So that's with one link out, but the glide lock's in the middle. What do you reckon? I'd probably say it needs to be a little bit tighter. Was it always the sub um, kit that you wanted? Or? I was looking at Pepsi. Pepsi as well. Um, I, went, I, think I went just went my second watch, to be honest. Yeah. So that's with one more link out. Yeah. So that's too tall and then obviously the glide lock yeah that's probably bad so if you this is fully extended glide lock okay so you can go a bit so there. you'll go that'll click and then just make it a little bit tighter and then click in again yeah spot on that actually 
So here's your two swing tags, your two links there. Mm -hmm. And the most important is your warranty card. So this is obviously unique to you. Yeah, your watch, you mm -hmm. remember. You need to keep this safe because it's the difference from like 2,000 pounds yeah. up to. So you've got three years remaining with Rolex and you get 12 months warranty with us. So this is slightly older. This is a, a 90s 36 millimeter. And then this one here. So a few years ago, it would be like 26 mil would be the the normal size for ladies, but now that women are wearing bigger watches yeah. now, yeah. So all steel is something like this. Full stainless That's steel bracelet. I'd, I'd normally wear yeah. that. Yeah. Bracelet. Bracelet on it. Yeah. yeah. So Jubilee. As I say, we can locate anything that you're looking for. Just we have a wider range of gents watches rather than the the ladies. So these are two slightly older pieces, but these are both 26 millimeter. So this was like the the smaller size um, ladies watch you can get. Now Rolex have made 28 millimeter. Mm. Because there's more, there's there's less people wearing the 26s now. Pepsi's a very hot model. Pepsi, yeah, Batman, yeah. Hulk. Well, that's Starbucks. kind of why I've done that as well. Because like I just I looked on Rolex, it's like 13150 for it. Yeah, now so now the retail price. Yeah. yeah Whereas this is quite a bit, is a bit of a exactly. Gap, this it? is a lot more built on hype. Whereas this is obviously half precious metal, so it's actually got value yeah, in the yeah, watch. Absolutely. Whereas this is full stainless steel, and it's literally built up on hype. Yeah. This is a nice one. So this is 31 millimeter. This is rose, <laughs> rose and steel with the rhodium dial. So that's 31. This is the mid size. This is it's in between. Yeah, yeah, it's in between. So this is like the biggest you'd probably want to go. This is probably the smallest you'd want to go. Anything smaller is very small. So something like that on Jubilee will cost this one exact is around the ten thousand pound mark. Jubilee maybe it's a touch more, but something like this is just slightly older. That's all. So this is nineties. The main difference you'll just see is the bracelet and the clasp. You have to treat her now because uh, we've got one now. <laughs> that's it, yeah. <laughs> we are just speaking about jewellery, weren't we, for wedding day? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 36 mils. If you're looking for something like slightly newer than this, you're probably just, you're well, looking under 10k regardless. Did you say 1990? 1990s, yeah. I think it, it might even be an 89 okay. slash 1990. So the main thing you'll see, you see the stretch on the bracelet. Yeah. So it's just, that's the only main sign. Once you've got it on your wrist, it doesn't look is that, that at all as that such. Of age or design? That's just because of age. No, it's not because of design. It's, this this brand new would have been like this. Yeah. Because it's obviously been worn for 20 odd years. It does get a little bit slouched, especially when people wear the watches too big mm -hmm. and it's almost like coming off the wrist. So it's stretching the bracelet. But you, you can get something around, like this around just under 10 grand mark, which would be newer than this as well. Yeah. So it's a good option. That's another classic watch really. Never really looks old. As I say, so this is your Submariner booklet. You're probably never ever going to read it. It's literally just self learn sorry. Yeah, how you use what the functions. Um, this is your warranty card. This is very important. So just make sure you keep that safe. Uh, I'll put the bezel protector in there. It's nice to have a full set as well. So much as people don't know the significance of having swing tags and yeah. stuff like that. It's not massively important, but if you were to sell the watch, some collectors may not look at it because it hasn't got a full yeah, set. Yeah. So just keep all that in the pouch and there's your two links there. Thank you. There you go. So that's Spot everything thank in you there. Very much, man. No problem at all. But thank no, you very thank much. Thank you very man. much. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you all. Have a safe trip. Enjoy Cheers. your wedding as well. Send me, send me a picture of the watch on the wrist. Me in the hat, yeah. <laughs> and the hat, yeah. Thanks. <laughs>
it's not the watch that most people would opt for. Walking into the golf club, mm -hmm. you're not going to get the wow factor of people that like a modern day date, whether it be 40 mil, diamond bezel, diamond dot, or some of the flashier watches, you know, rose gold, Daytona, maybe baguette dial. So do you think that, app that, that appeals more to the watch enthusiast? This is going to be a, a very discerned gentleman. It's going to be a watch enthusiast. It may even be somebody that just buys it for the movement, the fact that it's tourbillon. This is very limited production. I don't know whether they're actually numbered production pieces. It w There won't be a lot of these yeah, made. I mean, as far um, as IWC goes, that's got to be at the top of their catalogue or close. I have somebody in mind for this already. And I know your watch, if I said the last watch that you and your business partner bought was a rose gold zenith, and we've talked about a Lang and Son, this could be a watch for one of those business partners. So I'll probably be following this little YouTube up with a phone call. They are very discerned gentlemen. They buy things that aren't jumping out and saying, look at me or look what I'm wearing. What would you price that at market value? I right think now? this is going to be £50,000. It's not a £20 Seiko for Jack to laugh at. Mm -hmm. It's not a, a Panerai for him to go and turn his face. It's, you know, it's something that Jack will appreciate, mm -hmm. but it's not a watch for everybody. Thanks, Harry.